modern society has been conditioned by the beliefs of scientism, material scientism. The, uh, the doctrine of scientism has conditioned the way that we think, it's conditioned the form of society, it's conditioned the content of society, it's conditioned the attitudes that are built into society. And the thing is that the philosophy of materialism, that is only matter, that scientific, objective scientific knowledge is sufficient because there's nothing outside the range of objective scientific uh, knowledge. This philosophy is false. And we can easily see, it's quite extraordinary, the falsity of this philosophy is literally staring us in the face, like this video camera is staring me in the face. So, we're surrounded by artificial objects which could not have come together through any purely physical process. For example, video cameras, computers, power stations, space shuttles, space telescopes. There's no conceivable physical process that could bring these objects together. It looks obvious, and if you, uh, from three points of view, at least three points of view. First is energy. The material laws bring energy down. They bring everything to a low energy level. Whereas human beings, and in fact any living creatures, they increase the energy of systems. Like a skyscraper. We know that the natural tendency of a skyscraper is to fall down. But we raise a skyscraper. Uh, the natural tendency of tall cylindrical objects is to fall over. But astronauts make tall cylindrical objects escape out of the gravitational field of the Earth. So that's one thing that human beings, and living beings in general, they increase the energy of systems. Then the second thing is that the physical laws, natural physical laws, they mix things up. But living creatures, and especially human beings, they sort things out. For example, we make vacuums. You take all the air out of one space and you put it out there. There's nothing left in there. We create, uh, for example, tanks of inert gas. They separate out the different gases from a mixture of gas, the air, so that you only have the helium, the xenon, the argon, neon, like that. Uh, enriching nuclear fuels. The pure copper, pure silicon, pure aluminium. There's no way, there's no physical process that could possibly produce these, uh, these substances. And mathematically, the probability, it, there isn't even a probability, it's inconceivably small, inconceivably small probability that such substances could come together just by the physical laws themselves. And then the third thing is complexity. Information theory tells us, and common sense also tells us, that if, you want, if you've got to make a complex system, then you need complex laws. But the natural physical laws are quite simple. You look at what they produce, crystals. Uh, either they're producing very simple, regular things, like crystals, or they produce complex things which are irregular and not uh, like specific. Cliffs and so on, waterfall. These, but the, the specific information content, the specific complexity of uh, the products of the natural physical laws are relatively it's quite small. They're not very complex. Whereas we see living systems, uh, artificial systems, like computers, like information systems, like telephone directories, they're very, very complex indeed. And also, artificial objects have symbolic content. For example, we have works of art, paintings. How on earth would a, a mixture of colors arrange itself to produce uh, a picture of a particular scene from a particular viewpoint? There's no way that could happen. So symbolic content doesn't appear through physical laws because the physical laws don't have access to symbols. So we see that artificial objects can't come together just by physical laws. They have to be produced by conscious beings. Consciousness has to produce artificial objects. Now, another thing, our society is full of information. And information is another thing that physical laws by themselves can't produce. We see physical laws, they destroy information, they don't create it. Information theory tells us that 
the probability of increasing the information uh, content of the system is inconceivably small, infinitesimally small. Whereas human beings, for example, uh, in, in one year they're producing millions and millions and millions and millions of bytes of new information. So the probability that that could take place just through the physical laws themselves is it's out of the question, it's totally inconceivable. Why is this? That's a mathematical fact. Why is this? It's very simple, because information is not physical. A book is physical. A stone tablet is physical. A disk in a computer is physical. But the information that's contained in those uh, media is not physical. Physical objects, you see that they have temperature, they have mass, they have velocity, they have energy, they have extension. But energy doesn't, uh, information doesn't have any of these things. It doesn't have temperature. It doesn't have velocity. Velocity. It doesn't have size. It's measured in bytes, bits and bytes. So, since information is not physical, and that's agreed by, I mean, scientists since Einstein's time have agreed that. Since it's, since it's not physical, it's not possible to make a, a, a theory how physical laws or physical processes could produce non-physical information. It's not possible. So right there, the uh, scientism, the philosophy of scientism, that there's only matter and that objective knowledge can describe and explain everything in the universe, we see that it's completely wrong. And it's so obviously wrong, it's like a gigantic bluff. And somehow or other, it's not being challenged. A few scientists, for example, uh, Brian Josephson, he's a Nobel laureate, physicist, so he's mentioned that uh, human beings or conscious beings, they produce very improbable states of matter. But in general, nobody is challenging this gigantic bluff. So this is one uh, important point that material knowledge is not all in all. And it's not in principle, it's impossible that uh, one could explain, describe and explain everything in the physical world in terms of simply of physical interactions. So, what is producing artificial objects? Objects, obviously consciousness. So that tells us that consciousness is a real non-physical principle because it's producing real uh, effects which can't be explained in terms of physical laws. And that's reasonable because we see that all living entities are constantly opposing the laws of nature. Grass grows upward, trees grow upward, insects fly in the air, birds fly, frogs jump, we stand up. Human beings, they try to oppose the physical... Our whole business is trying to oppose the physical laws. And amongst human beings, the people who oppose the physical laws to the greatest extent are the scientists. Scientists, in what they do themselves, they oppose the physical laws. For example... Michael Polanyi, he's a philosopher of science, he pointed out Galileo, Galileo investigated gravity by lifting a pendulum ball and then watching the way that it swings. So, watching the way that it swings under the influence of gravity, that enabled him to establish some physical constants. But it didn't explain how the, how the pendulum ball got lifted in the first place. Similarly, he was dropping weights off the Leaning Tower of Pisa to time how long it took to, for them to get down. But to do that, he had to climb the Tower of Pisa against the law of gravity. Similarly, if the scientists want to investigate the laws of electromagnetism, so they have to separate electrical, uh, electrical poles, electrical charges, or magnetic poles. And to investigate the forces in the atom, they have these huge, gigantic arrangements cyclotrons uh, and they put enough energy into them to light up two, three, four, five cities highly artificial in order to break up the entities that they're uh, investigating so scientists are opposing the natural laws and they also help the rest of society to escape from the limitations of the natural laws so they're producing information systems they're producing transport and so on so all living creatures are actually outlaws because they're living outside the physical laws. And the greatest outlaws of all are the physical scientists, objective scientists. 
So this tells us that the biggest contradiction to the scientific mm. doctrine that scientific knowledge covers everything, the biggest contradiction to that is the scientific process itself. And that's what I want to look at now. This shows us that not only is this obj uh, doctrine of physicalism, mechanism, not only is it false, but also it doesn't make sense.